So when I moved here to become a songwriter, I went to this place called the Bluebird Cafe that a friend of mine had told me about. And I was so gung-ho. I didn't even, actually, I didn't even know you could be a songwriter for a living. I didn't know that that existed. So I probably wanted to be an artist. Um, but I went to the Bluebird Cafe and I heard they had a Mississippi Writers Night and it was Fred Noblock, uh, Paul Davis. I go crazy when I look in your eyes. Paul Davis, uh, Mac. Uh, Mac McAnally, brilliant guy, um, all these incredible songwriters, and I was blown away that night, but what I realized is I'm nowhere close to being able to compete with the, the best of the best in Nashville, so I kind of holed up in my little apartment off West End Avenue and would listen to every record I could get my hands on, records, that's right, back then it was uh, LPs, uh, vinyl, and uh, to sit there and absorb every country song I could, check out who wrote them and learn their styles until I could, I thought, why even try to compete in Nashville until I compete with the people who are getting cuts? Those guys were the guys getting cuts. And so I really did a lot of homework and just practiced and practiced and because I wanted to be them. It was so amazing for me to see these guys sitting with an acoustic guitar at the Bluebird Cafe and just blowing everybody in the place away. And you could hear a pin drop in that place. Everyone wanted to hear every note and every word of the lyric when those people would sing their songs. So that's that was a, an early memory of 1980s Nashville for me.